Hey, what the flickers, I'm back, and I'm back with a great interview for you. It's with director Vim Venders, who directed films such as The Buena Vista Social Club, uh, also Paris, Texas, as well as the very, very good film Wings of Desire. But uh, he recently got an Oscar nomination for Best Documentary for his film Pina, which is a documentary about uh, German choreographer Pina Bausch, who created a new sort of style of modern dance, which is known as dance theater. Now, what's really interesting about this movie is that Pina is the second best 3D movie I've ever seen after Avatar. Now, usually when you think of documentaries, you would think, oh, that's you know better for animation or for action movies. But uh, if you get a chance to watch Pina, which I, I really recommend you do, you'll see that it plays to all of the strengths of 3D without people having to throw things at the screen or zoom out at you. Because when you think about it, dance is all about movement through space. And when you can show that in longer, unbroken takes in the real world, which is already in 3D, it really shows the potential of 3D. And Menders has a lot of really interesting stuff to say about what he sees as the future and potential of 3D, which uh, at least were definitely a surprise to me. So anyway, uh, please take a look at my interview with Vim Venders. What do you think the, the emotional impact of 3D is in a, in a film? Or what it should or could be? Well, what it could be, I can tell you more what it could be, 3D, it's two different things. It is either an attraction, an additional attraction to filmmaking, or it can be a whole new thing, a whole new experience, a whole new way to immerse in the lives and into the world of somebody else. And as such, I'm only as such, I'm interested in it. And I think there's a whole different 3D out there that is very natural and that is not effect driven at all, but that is, in a way, the continuation of your life. You see with your two eyes and you, your brain constitutes space all the time when you turn around and when you walk out of the hotel here, you are in a 3D universe. And I want to make this film about the world of Pina Bausch in such a way that after a couple of minutes you forget that you're watching a film in 3D. I didn't want the technology to be the attraction, but the incredible art and the beauty of Pina Bausch's world. One, one thing that I was so impressed with in this was the, uh, the sound design and hearing the dancers breathing and their footsteps. Uh, what were your, your thoughts behind bringing that aspect to, to her performance? Pina Bausch's art is very physical and sometimes the dancers go to the extreme limits. Sacre du Printemps is, I mean, even as an, as in the audience, you're completely wasted afterwards. You're in sweat. And it's extremely physical. And as we take you into such a privileged place that you're really on the stage with them and that you almost feel them and touch them, of course you have to hear them breathe and you, you have to hear them moan and you have to hear the, the humanity of it. Very often dance is strictly an aesthetic experience. And in the case of Pina Bush, it's the opposite. It's, it's about life, it's not about aesthetics. And, and I was reading an interview, you, you spoke about um, seeing uh, Pina's work for the first time and, and you having a very strong emotional reaction to it. Did you feel that you learned something about humanity or the human condition by watching her work? Pina started out with a whole different premise than dance in general. She said, I'm not interested in how my dancers move. I'm only interested in what moves them? And that is a gigantic difference. Out of a sudden, dance deals with something. It's really about who we are and how we live and how we face life and love and loss and fear and joy. It's about all that. And it's, Pina's art has put the dance world upside down. It has really revolutionized it. And you have to see it to believe it, that your body understands it and that your entire being understands it even before your brain does. Your brain might lag behind because you might have conceptions of dance that are different. And you might think all things about dance and then you see Pina's work and you say, and you feel it. I mean, I cried like a baby when I first saw my first piece of Pina. It just came out of me because I couldn't believe that something so natural and beautiful had been unknown to me until then. In, in, uh, in an interview, you said that, that 3D and dance are, are, are very well made for each other. 
And in, I've been very kind of critical of, of 3D, except for in my mind there's two great 3D movies, Avatar and Pina. <laughs> and I, I, was, I was wondering whether you feel that all movies should be made in 3D or only certain ones, or eventually, or that's just the way that the, that the technology is moving? I think not all movies should be made in 3D, not at all. But movies that have an affinity to space and that can use it and that where this new language is a necessity, that is interesting. When it's only a, a, an attraction and a, a fairground attraction, basically, these movies can use it and but could just as well be made without it. But to tell a story that has an affinity to this new space is, fa is fabulous. I haven't really seen it, and I, I agree with you. I mean, the only masterpiece in this new language is Avatar, and the rest was like a little bit waste of time. It was almost like destroying this new language because before it even could show its potential, because using it strictly as an attraction is not enough. The film has to really want it and need it. And dance, I was lucky. Dance was made for it. They were made for each other, 3D and dance. And I'm sure there are stories that are made to be told in 3D. We just have to still find them and invent them. Well, one thing I was curious, Evan, has James Cameron uh, spoken to you about, about your film? I've never spoken to him. I would have loved to be able to call him. We made the bulk of Peanut before Avatar came out. It was a rumor. James Cameron was making this movie, and he was going to put 3D on the map, and people thought we were crazy when we started making a dance film, because 3D was not really part of the cinematic landscape. And then I'm eternally grateful to Cameron that he had this grand vision, and he made it clear to the entire world, from now on there is a new language in cinema, and it made it respectable, and it made people respect us in our little project more, but I've never spoken to the man. I would have, I would sh shine his shoes. <laughs> I mean, is there um, a film from the from the past, a favorite film of yours that you would love to, s that you wish had been shot in 3D, or you'd be curious to see in 3D? I showed the film at the Chinese theater on Saturday, and afterwards there was a lady, elderly lady coming towards me and shaking my hands and said, I'm the widow of Gene Kelly. He would have loved this movie and he would have immediately used 3D if he had known it. Ooh, that was, that made my day. Yeah, especially with him with such a physical type of, of kind of work. And imagine, of imagine what he did and how he did transcend space, let's say in singing in the rain. I mean, he really did. He didn't have the technology, but he went very, very far with the two-dimensional representation and I started to imagine what Gene Kelly could have done if he had had James Cameron's camera. And you know, you, you're talking about the about almost sort of killing the three D genre before it, it got started. Um, do, do you what do you think were the main errors that that studios have been making with their three D films that that's caused the reputation to go down? And do you think they're looking to fix it? I hope they're about to fix it, and I hope that movies like. Scorsese and Spielberg that are coming out now will open up the range of movies that and the, the, the language to other sort of storytelling. I think myself, I'm completely convinced that 3D is the future of the documentary and that it will lift that genre to a whole new level because the presence of a camera, the presence of a person in front of a camera is a whole different thing in 3D your body in front of the camera, your, you as a person, you have a volume, you are there, I can almost touch you. I am interested in your story in a whole different way when I shoot you in 3D. So I think the documentary has a long way to go with 3D and eventually storytelling will also not in only include action and blockbuster movies but also intimate stories and family stories that we just have to crack the code how to tell it in 3D.